There are major changes happening to the UK tax system in 2024 and 2025. You need to know what these changes are so that you can plan ahead and because your tax position is going to change. If you're new here, I'm Kiran. I'm a qualified accountant with over 10 years experience working in tax, advising some of the largest UK companies on their tax affairs. In this video, I'll be covering five surprising changes that the UK government are making to the tax system. The tax changes we're about to discuss were recently announced by Jeremy Hunt in his spring budget, but just a caveat that we're not going to discuss every single tax update, just the ones that will have the most impact to most people. The first update is to national insurance contributions. NIC is paid between those aged 16 and the state pension age when they earn above a certain threshold. Class 1 is paid by employees and classes 2 and 4 are paid by the self-employed. And there are other classes and rates paid by employers but we're not going to cover that as part of this video. This is a summary of the current rates, but from the 6th of April 2024, some of these rates are changing. Class 1 is reducing to 8% from 10%, that's a saving for employees. If you're earning 25k a year, it's a saving of around £250, and if you're earning 50k a year, it's a saving of around £750. For the self-employed, Class 4 NIC will reduce to 6% from 9% and Class 2 NICs will no longer be payable. But if you are a small business owner and you are earning below the small profits threshold of around 7k, you may want to consider making voluntary Class 2 NI contributions. And that's because Class 2 contributes to your eligibility to claim benefits like the maternity allowance, bereavement support payments, and also the state pension. So it's important to check your national insurance record to make sure that you have enough credits to claim these benefits if you need to. And you can do this by logging onto your online HMRC account or downloading the HMRC app. If you're a small business earning over that 7K small business profits threshold, then you will be automatically building up class two credits. So it's not necessary to make those voluntary payments. Now, these NI savings don't always offset the amount of tax that the population is saving because the national insurance and income tax thresholds are being frozen until 2028. That's something called fiscal drag, which you may have heard economists talking about. So what does it mean for you? Well, the IFS have said that if you're earning between 26,000 and 60,000, then you will have an overall saving because of the NI tax rate cuts. But if you're earning between £12,750 and 26k, or you're earning over 60k, then you will actually end up paying more tax because of the fact that the national insurance and income tax thresholds are being frozen. Now let's talk about a couple of property tax updates. And the first one is capital gains tax on the disposal of residential property. You have to pay capital gains tax if you dispose of an asset like a second home. Currently, gains on the disposal of residential property that doesn't qualify for principal private residence relief is taxed at 18% if it falls within your basic rate band or 28% if it falls above the basic rate band. Principal private residence relief just means that you get a full or partial exemption from CGT if you've ever lived in the property yourself. In simple terms, that would mean that if you made 100k on the disposal of a second home that you'd never lived in and your basic rate band had all been used up, you would pay 28% capital gains tax. So you would have a 28k tax liability on the disposal of your second home. But that will change for any disposals made on or after the 6th of April 2024 of residential property because the higher rate band is reducing from 28% to 24%. So that's a saving of 4%. So in our previous example, it would just mean that you would pay 24K instead of 28K on the disposal. This is only going to impact people who are in the higher and additional income tax bands and who are disposing of residential property. 
And the reason behind this change is thought to be to encourage people to sell their second homes, to free up the market for people who want to move house or to get on the property ladder. The second property tax update is to multiple dwellings relief. In the UK, you pay stamp duty land tax when you buy property above a certain threshold and that threshold moves depending on whether you're a first time buyer on the value of the property that you're buying and also whether or not you qualify for certain other reliefs. One of those stamp duty reliefs is when you buy multiple properties as part of a single transaction and it works by reducing the effective rate of tax that you would pay on a bigger value for the whole transaction and instead it looks at the average price paid for each of the properties in that transaction. So the stamp duty would be calculated on a lower value than if the relief hadn't been available. But the MDR is going to be abolished from the 1st of June 2024 and it will impact property investors and also people buying property with ancillary buildings. But just a note here that these SDLT changes only apply to property in England and Northern Ireland and any transactions in Scotland and Wales will be unaffected. Now let's talk about some changes that are happening in 2025 and the first one is the furnished holiday lettings regime. If you have a holiday home you may qualify for the FHL tax regime which offers significant tax advantages as compared to long-term lets. One of the key tax benefits is that you can deduct your mortgage interest in full compared to just a 20% credit if you have a long-term let. And another one is that you can claim capital allowances on fixtures and fittings, which is a tax deduction that allows you to write off the value of the asset over time. And that's not available to longer term residential lettings. Another key benefit was business asset disposal relief, which would mean that you would only pay 10% capital gains tax on the disposal of the property as long as it fell within a lifetime limit of £1 million. These factors have made it more advantageous to let property on a short-term basis rather than a long-term basis, but from April 2025, the FHL regime will be abolished. That means that people operating Airbnbs, for example, are no longer going to have the tax advantages that they once had over long-term rentals. The hope is that by removing the incentive for landlords to operate short-term rentals, they will move towards long-term lets and that will free up rental properties for people to rent in their local areas. Another update in 2025 is to non-DOM status. This is one of the more extreme changes that is happening to the UK tax system. Non-DOMs are people who live in the UK but consider their permanent home to be outside of the UK. Being a non-DOM gives you the benefit of claiming the remittance basis as long as you pay a charge and you've lived in the UK for less than 15 years. That means that you don't have to pay UK tax on your worldwide income and gains unless you remit them to the UK. So you only pay UK tax on your UK income and gains. In contrast, UK domiciled people pay UK tax on their worldwide income and gains, regardless of whether they remit them back to the UK. Most non-DOMs are extremely wealthy and probably one of the most well-known non-DOMs is Akshar Tamirti, who has avoided a 2.1 million tax charge annually by claiming non-DOM status. But from April 2025, the non-DOM status is changing and instead we're moving from a remittance basis to a residence basis. This means that people moving to the UK will not be subject to UK tax on their foreign income and gains for the first four years that they live in the UK, as long as they haven't been UK resident for the previous 10 years. This will remove the current tax treatment for non-DOMs and it will mean that the remittance basis is no longer relevant. People returning to the UK who have been expats might benefit from this because for the first four years, they won't be taxed in the UK on their foreign income and gains as long as they haven't lived here for the previous 10 years. But for some non-DOMs who are currently claiming the remittance basis, they may be in a worse off position. And some people have criticized that there's a risk of chasing non-DOMs out of the country. 
If any of these changes are likely to impact you significantly, then I would recommend speaking to a tax advisor. Let me know in the comments if there are any other tax topics that you want me to cover in future videos. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next week.